Before I begin, if you just want to see the installation of the filters on the water system, you can skip ahead. I'll put a time down at the bottom. But for the first part of this video, I wanted to quickly talk about the filters I bought, why I bought them, the system I'm going to set up, how much everything costs, all the fittings you're going to need, and why I'm doing this the way I'm doing it. So we just bought a new house and we have a well and we live here in Michigan and we get really good water pressure but we also have iron in our water and arsenic in our water. We had a test when we bought the house and they said we had 20 parts per billion of arsenic. Now this system will not get rid of the arsenic. The only way to get rid of arsenic is with a reverse osmosis system and we're going to be installing two of those on sinks right under the sink upstairs. This is purely to get rid of sediment and minerals and hopefully iron that's in the water so all of that isn't slammed into the reverse osmosis filter system which is a series of filters and that doesn't clog up. This is going to filter everything in the house except the sprinkler system and the spigots on the outside. There's a bypass on the plumbing right over here. This is going to intercept all the other water and it's going to intercept it before it gets to the water softener. So before I bought anything, I did tons of research. I would watch videos and pictures and read about it, and I saw people had done one filter or they had three filters with the same filter cartridge in it. I saw filters that had been uh, plumbed in parallel so you didn't lose pressure. And this is just the system that I came up with. It makes the most sense to me. And what I've come up with is a series of four filters, and each of them with a smaller micron size opening. So the way it's going to work is like all other systems, I'm going to tap off the existing line, run through the filters, and tap back in. I will have valves to isolate it and pressure gauges to monitor the pressure coming in and out. And before I keep going, everything I bought here I got on Amazon, and I'll put links down in the description with what I bought, the cost, and the quantity, and the quantity I'm going to actually use. Because some of these I bought a pack of 10 and I'm only using 4 but I'll put all links and the cost for everything down in the description. But for the filters themselves, these are the first two that I purchased. And this one is a 100 micron filter, and this one is a 50 micron filter. I know they look the same, but they have smaller um, openings in the, the fabric itself. And the fabric, when I say fabric, these are actually turn down filters or spin down filters. You're not actually changing the filter. It's kind of like the screen on your screen window where it's just going to catch the particles. When this gets clogged, all you have to do is open the valve. All of that will get washed out and close the valve. And I really like that idea that I'll never have to change a filter on either of these two. So these are going to catch the big particles that come in the house first. Now the next two that I bought, um, I was almost going to buy, there's a real popular one. It's blue from DuPont. It was quite cheap. There's a billion people that bought it on Amazon. But I went with these because they're clear and I wanted to be able to see the filter. I wanted to be able to see if it was clogged with iron. I'm going to have pressure gauges but I wanted to see how clogged it was. Immediately look at it and say, oh man, I got to change that filter. So I went with these. They're from Culligan. This is the filter casing. This isn't the actual filter. The filter gets screwed, uh, placed inside of here. And these are from Culligan. They're uh, on Amazon. They're one of the most popular ones on there. It seems super well built. It, looking at the picture, I didn't realize how large it was, but these are really big. They take a 10 inch by 4 inch circular filter cartridge um, that looks like this. And the cool thing about this is I bought two exactly the same, but I have in these I have a 100 micron, 50 micron. I'm going to put a 25 micron in here and a 5 micron in here. If it starts to get clogged up or I lose pressure, I might change this from a 5 to a 10 or a 15. And that is an issue with this, is that as it is now, water's running straight up through the house. And we're going to be putting it through bends and pipes and valves and gauges and filters. And we're going to lose some pressure, hopefully not a lot. Like I said, I live in Michigan. We have plenty of water. Now, it is estimated that each of these bends and fittings and tees, you might lose a half a PSI. And I think maybe each time it goes through one of these filters, I might lose up to 5 PSI. So if I have 50 coming out of that pump, by the time it goes through here, it might be down to 30. I'm hoping not. And by the time it goes upstairs, it might be 20. I hope not also. The next point is I was originally going to use solid copper pipe. 
and use solder and hook it all up. But I decided to go with PEX piping, which is right here. One downside with the PEX piping is the inside diameter. It's slightly smaller. This is all three quarter inch pipe and three quarter inch is what I have back there. But the inside diameter of PEX piping is a little smaller with the system I'm going with. You can expand the PEX and that's one method of crimping it on. But with all these different fittings, these are actually smaller than a three quarter inch and a three quarter inch with a copper. A copper fitting fits over the three quarter inch pipe. These are going on the inside of the three quarter inch PEX piping. So we might lose some pressure by the time it goes through the whole system and upstairs. I'm hoping it's not a lot, but it's something I'll have to look out for. Now I went with the cheapest one, which is this here. And this tool actually works for half inch or three quarter inch. And it kind of works like, you know, a hose clamp where you put it on a, a tube and you use a screwdriver and you can tighten the hose. It kind of works in the same way where there's an inner ring and an outer ring and you're compressing that outer ring. You're just kind of pinching it together. It was only 30 bucks, 30 bucks. These were each, each of these filter casings were 52. And I think these were each 52 as well. This whole system uh, was right around $400, which seems like a lot, but you could just go with one filter and it would be half the cost. But the main cost was in these filter systems. Um, again, with PEX piping, the cost is a little bit more expensive than a normal copper tee, but these weren't too much. I think these were a buck fifty. Um, I am going to use a shark bite fitting where I'm connecting to the existing system. These were five or six bucks. These are the expensive ones. You definitely don't want to use the shark bike fittings all the time. Just one or two in certain scenarios where you can't weld it or you don't want to weld it. Now, like I said, I did a ton of research and I drew the system out maybe 10 times. And it helped me to visualize how I wanted to do this um, because when I started, I didn't really understand the, the actual flow of how it was going to go. I know if you've done this before, it probably makes sense. But like I said, it's going to leave the existing pipe. I'm going to cut. It's going to come into this uh, shark bite fitting. From here, I want to install a T, which will go to a, a butterfly valve where I can isolate this system. So there's actually, actually about three butterfly valves. Two where I can shut off the incoming and outgoing flow of the system and one for the bypass. So if I ever want to change a filter, I will close the filter system valves, open the bypass, and the water will go straight through and straight out. But for most of the time, I'll close the bypass and it will run through the system. Now the way this is going to go, I'm going to take this piece of plywood I have right here, I'm going to mount it to the wall, I'm going to fit everything on here that I need, and I'll make the final connection to my water system where I actually have to cut the pipe on somewhere like a Saturday or a Sunday where I know I have plenty of time because there's going to be um, no water to the house for a little bit while I make this connection. But when you're doing this, before you uh, start laying it out, you have to decide where this is going to go and you do want it open and easy and accessible to get to. So that's why I'm putting it on that big wall and not tucking it behind somewhere where I won't be able to get to it or I won't be able to access it.
this is the point where I'm connecting. I'm going to be connecting into this pipe here. So I just set up my uh, laser level to shine a line on the wall just so I can get a rough estimate of where this is going to be because I want this one in line pretty close. The other one is going to come up, drop down, and then go over and connect here. But this one I kind of want to keep in line. Well, I screwed up. I figure it's a better idea to put some of these fittings on here now, and I definitely have to put this fitting on first. I can't mount this, screw this in, because I have to spin this to rotate it on. So I'll have to mount both of these uh, simultaneously but I might as well do the ends too. The crescent wrench doesn't fit. Jesus. That ain't right. Keys to using this PEX pipe is you want to make sure the tool is wide open. It can grab a little bit on the end. Then it'll grab it and won't let go. But you don't want this all the way at the end, up against the elbow. You want it a little ways off, so it grabs it right in the middle and squishes it out. Once it's set, it releases. That easy. I have everything dry fit and now I'm just kind of aligning it before cinching it down.
I've looped everything through, everything on the wall is done. I just have to make the final two connections here. Luckily, I have a direct flow through here and a bypass which goes through the water softener. So I can close this valve and this valve, open this, we'll still have water to the house, but this will be isolated. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these and I can make my connections right here. And what I'm gonna be using to connect the PEX to the copper is just a sharp bite connection. I know these are kind of expensive. These are, the elbows are like five or six bucks. But um, I couldn't really find a good copper to PEX connection, and I figured this would be great. I'll just snap it in, snap it in, and be done with it. Now, I don't have a lot of room to get a cutter in here because it's so close, so I have the water shut off, and I'm going to do it with a hacksaw and a bucket. I just cut this piece out and another reason why these shark bite connections are good uh, it doesn't have to be completely dry you can see there's water dripping probably leaking from this valve and water's coming up from here and um, with the shark bite connections you just pop it in otherwise I don't know how I would be able to solder it with all this water in the pipe Okay, time to make the connection, but before I do, I'm going to finally use this little dumb tool I got. It shows the depth that this should be on there. And I can mark it and see how far that shark bite should fit on there so I know it's all the way in. This is the 5 micron filter. Now, uh, one important thing is to check this gasket. Um, it's good to have backups and to have uh, food grade um, lithium grease to put on here or silicone grease to put on here because you want to keep this clean and lubricated so it doesn't leak. Time for the big test to see if it leaks. I'm going to close the main and open the bypass. Well, it's filling up. Pressure. This little guy right here is a water sensor. It's got two sensors on the bottom. I'm going to put this down here. It's super important. So if we hear this beeping, we know something's leaking. We have 35 psi here. 35 psi here. So and on the tank, right off the tank, we have 38 psi. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we have two small leaks. None of them are leaking out of the shark bite connections. I have a small leak right here and a small leak right up here. So they're both leaking out of the fittings that I did. So I'm gonna close this here, close this one here, and I'm going to open the bypass. So now it's running in and right back out. Um, so now this system is closed, I'm gonna try to tighten Tighten this here and somehow tighten this here. That's going to be tricky. Well, uh, knock on wood, at the moment everything's working fine. There's no leaks. I did have um, some leaks in that brass fitting. I had to pop off one of the uh, PEX couplings, put more Teflon tape on it, and really cinch it down. The hard part was they wanted to be tight off center. 
so I had to put enough Teflon tape to get them to be tight when they're parallel together, like this. Um, nothing's leaking, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. And like I said, I'll have my water sensor here, so in the middle of the night, if anything happens, hopefully we'll hear it, and the basement won't flood. Um, but another thing about the pressure, I noticed when I connected it and turned the water back on, the gauge coming out of the well was 55, and both of these were reading 55 too. Um, and when water flew, flowed through it, these dropped, this one didn't. So I don't think these have a correlation um, up until the point where the pump turns on. Okay, it's been a week since I put the first part of this in and I did make a couple changes. One is I put two more elbows in the corner just so it doesn't have that big uh, round curve. I felt there was a lot of pressure on these shark bite fittings, so I put the elbow in so it was nice and stable. I also put another bracket here on the wall made out of wood just to hold everything in so it's nice and tight. Um, but it's been a week and I'm amazed at how much uh, rust is already in this filter. This is the 5 micron filter. I see a little bit in the 100, nothing in the 50, a little bit in the 25, but the 5 and the 100 are the ones that are filled up. So I think if I were to do this all over again, all I would do from this well is use a 100 micron filter and a 5 micron filter, just the two. Um, I don't know how much those other two are going to do, but again, it's only been a week. And they're not hurting anything. They're definitely helping. I can see a lot of rust in this 25 micron filter. So what I might do is make this a 10. I could buy a new filter like this, and I could make that one a 10. Just replace the 25 and put in a 10. Another thing I added was this down tube from these blow-off filters with a little brass T. This is 3 8 inch inside diameter. So that's what fits on these down tubes, and it just goes to uh, the sump over here. And it's 25 feet, it was five bucks and two bucks for the fitting. The last thing I have to do is make a shelf. I'm gonna make a shelf up here for the filters. I have to write on the board. I wanna write so it's nice and clear to anybody who comes down here what the filters are, the process for changing them. So if I'm not here, people can see, okay, open this valve, close these two, unscrew this. I'm gonna have, a, on the shelf, I'll have the wrenches up here too. And two more things that I bought are a non-toxic lubricant and some more O-rings. And some people have said that it's good to have these. Some people change them every time they change a filter. Sometimes when they open the filter, the O-rings expand and they can't get them back in. So they're good to have. And you use the lubricant to put on the O-rings to uh, lubricate it so it sits and it seals properly. So I'm going to have these sitting next to it as well. But so far in the week that it's been up, I haven't noticed any pressure loss in the showers all the way upstairs. I haven't noticed the water pressure down at all. So I think I'm a little lucky being here in Michigan. We have tons of pressure. Um, I'm seeing on the gauge down there out of the well, it's 50 PSI. Right here on the outlet, I'm seeing 45 PSI and 45 PSI right there. So the filters haven't been clogged, although they're full of rust. They're, they don't look like they're clogged according to the two uh, different pressures. A little bit of a pressure loss from the well to here. I'm not sure why it's been like that right when I installed it. But so far, so good. I'm really happy with it. Hopefully, we won't be getting any more rust in our toilets or our showers or our sinks. Um, and this means that now I can go do the reverse osmosis filter to get rid of the arsenic in the other rooms, knowing that all this rust and sediment has already collected here and it won't be collecting in those filters. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. I really love using the PEX pipe. I like having all the filters, knowing that all the water coming into the entire house is filtered out now. Um, so let me know what you think, thanks. Well, I hope you liked the video you just watched. If you did, feel free to subscribe by clicking the button on this side. You can also check out all the videos I've done, um, the playlist from things I've built, things I've fixed, home repair, 3D printing, and on this side you can check out a recommended video similar to the one you just watched. And as always, down in the description I'll put a link to my blog which has more pictures and more information about the video you just watched. Thanks.